Welcome everyone. My name is Madeline Swanson once again, um, the Career Services Coordinator for the Dixie L. Levitt School of Business. On behalf of Southern Utah University's Better Your Business Leadership Training Program, we'd like to welcome you today to Remote Work Tools Module Number Four, Time Management, Time Management, Managing Your Time Like a Pro and Teaching Teams to Do the Same with Tania Wallace. The goal of this course is to assist you and your teams in adapting in real time to changing work environments. I'd also like to thank our sponsors for making this possible. A big thanks to the Dixie L. Levitt School of Business, Utah Rural Summit, Wells Fargo Foundation, and Smart Spaces. I do want to provide a brief update at this time. The bonus session with Dean Mary Pearson has been scheduled for May 27th at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, you will have the link sent to you on Monday when I send out the next reminder email um, for the next session. Um, make sure, um, and I also want to remind you of a few best practices before we get started. Make sure your first and last name is um, your title on the Zoom screen. Uh, that way we can track your attendance and mark you as completed for that certificate of completion at the end of this. And also be sure to have your microphones on mute, but leave your videos on during the presentation. A big reminder, if you have a question, please type it in using the chat box. At the end of Tania's presentation, Scott Levitt is here and we'll make sure it is asked. And now the whole reason why you're all here is I want to welcome Tania Wallace. Tania is currently the COO of a multi-million dollar grocery decor company with 60 plus team members located in rural Utah. Tania is known as the experience creator within and outside of the company. Tania is passionate about creating an experience in every store and helping the retailer keep relevant in today's marketplace. She is positioned to become the CEO of Decor Works within the next five years. Tania was named in Utah Business Magazines as one of the 20 in their 20s, as well as the recipient of Progressive, Progressive Grocers Gen Next Award in 2019. I'll now turn the time over to, to Tania. Enjoy. Okay, so I'm so Okay, so I'm so excited to be going over today's presentation. So what I'm going to be presenting is how to manage your time like a pro. And this is such an interesting topic because right now with the remote working, manage your, managing your time is even more complex. You know, traditionally, you would be at home for the morning and then you would go to work for a block of time and then you would have your home in the evening. But when you're remote working, everything starts working in with each other. Your home time and pizza and your work time and your work time flows over into your home time. And so being able to manage this is critical to staying successful and keeping your business moving. You know, and especially when you have a demanding job, your work can then leach into all areas of your life. So managing your time like a pro is going to be an awesome conversation for you to really think about after I'm done with this presentation. Okay, to give you a little background of who I am and what company I work with and how I've learned how to do these things is, I am the COO of DecorWorks. Um, so DecorWorks is a Southern Utah based company, but we are national. So we work on very large projects. Um, we do the interior of spaces for businesses, for organizations across the whole United States. Um, so what we do is we have a job that comes through in just a concept form. And then we design it, engineer it, manufacture it, and install it. So we'll have jobs that are from $20,000 all the way to $1.5 million. So if you can imagine how many complexities and how many moving parts goes into a single job that's a million and a half dollars of just decor and design, um, it can get pretty crazy. So at a very young age, I was introduced to this world of all of these moving parts. Um, and so I was able to learn how to manage the time and how to get the rest of the, your team managing their time as well. 
which leads me into what I'm going to be talking about today is you have your personal life, right? Like you have all of those things that you're doing at home that are very demanding and you want to give time to your family, but you also have the responsibility of looking out for your team and helping them work on the right things at the right time and everyone needs to be going in the same direction. And then you've got your company and how they're managing their time and how efficient are you being with your company? And how active are you moving on these different projects that will make a difference? And so if you're able, it's like all of these things are linked together. If you're able to have good time management at home, your success to have it with your team and your family is incredibly higher. And it goes the other way. If you're having great time management at work and your company's managing its time well, then that's going to flow over into your personal life. And so these, thing, these three components are very connected together because they're all influencing each other. Um, and the principles that I'm going to talk about will work for all three areas. Okay, so I get this question all the time is how do you balance everything? How do you balance your time and your family and your work and all of that? And this phrase that I have actually really loved um, as I've, been as I've been going through things more and more is life is more about harmony than balance, especially when you're remote working. So many times you'll be very absorbed into one area for a period of time because either you say it's work, you've got a deadline, you've got a lot of projects that you're moving through, it will make a huge difference in your company if you can just engage long enough to, to push it through. So you could be working late every single night. But then the next week, you know, the next week you're saying, I really kicked butt last week. You know, in the evenings, I'm going to choose to go home at the normal time and I'm going to really engage with my family. And the weekend, maybe I take a three day weekend and then you take some more time. And so what I have found is it's more of the harmony over several weeks or a month that makes a difference. The balancing every day or every week can make my time management go out the window because what it's doing is I'm not dedicating the right amount of time to the area that I need to um, where with the place that I was at. Okay, so if we go back to the three components, you have your personal component, you have your team component, and you have your company component. In this first component, which is your personal, is I have two main tips. The first tip, is keep a note about everything. If someone is wanting you to research something, you open up your, it can be a traditional notebook. I use a Mac and so it has a built-in notebook, which is fantastic. Is if someone's asked me to look into something, I start writing down all my thoughts and everything that I find that I research goes into that note. But then I also think, okay, I've got to have meals this week. I've got a meal plan. So I have a meal plan notebook. Anything that goes in as a part of my life has a note in my notebook. And I'm very, I'm very particular that if I'm in a conversation that I'm writing things down because especially when you're busy and things are blending into each other, it's very easy to lose um, thoughts or ideas or what people were asking of you. And so this is where my notebook is huge. I have almost 900 notes of all various topics so that when I engage in that project, all I have to do is open up that note and then I have all of the information that I have prepared in the past that I've had conversations on. And so what this does is it makes it to where you're more um, efficient you are more, you're able to engage in more projects throughout the week because you would have been already doing portions of that project and thinking it through in a previous time. Okay, the next part, which is probably one of the most important parts, is being very intentional with your schedule. What I mean by being intentional with your schedule is you have a, a system to where you're logging everything. Um, so you know what's coming up in that day. You know what's coming up in the week and you know what's coming up next week. How I do mine is I have the three things that I'm really focusing on. So at work, I have three areas and I'm saying, okay, this is my main focus. If things are coming outside of this focus, I really got to consider the priority with it. 
um, underneath that focus area is where I put this week's date. So if it's May, the week of May 10th to May 15th, then I will have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I start to build out my schedule on every single day. I still keep my calendar, but what this is, is I have a check mark box to say, okay, did I accomplish these things? Underneath this week's schedule, I have a cue. And a cue is if someone asks me a question, needs me to do something, sends me an email, I get an idea, anything that I need to accomplish within the next couple weeks, I put in my queue. Because as I'm intentional about my schedule and at the beginning of the week when I go to plan it, I take things out of my queue and I place them in a day with a time. And what that does is it helps me look at all of the things that I have going on. And then it helps me group like items. So if I have a lot of people that are asking a similar question of me, or I have, or I have projects that are all circling around the same topic or the same skill set, is I'll try to pull all of those together in one afternoon. Because instead of having all of the switching costs from going from one activity to the next, I can group it to where I can still stay engaged with that same part of my brain. So one of the more important things when I'm doing my schedule is that every day I identify a highlight item. What this highlight item means is this is one of the most important things that I need to make sure I do today. And I put a little asterisk by it. So if it's something at home, like I need to make sure to renew my passport or I need to help my daughter with her homework, like she is due, that I have an asterisk by it because then I make sure that everything else that I build time around that one activity. If it's something at work, like I need to accomplish this project, then what I do is I make sure I say, okay, I need four hours and all of these other things that are in my queue or all of the other things that are building up in my day, I'm just going to have to move because this item right here is my most important thing for the day. This will make the biggest difference for all of the projects that I'm working on in the future. Okay. To do a recap on what my schedule looks like is I'll quickly go through it here. So what I do is I have this week, I have my queue, and then I have my next couple weeks all built out. Um, and what this is, is as I'm scheduling meetings, as I'm bringing in big projects, I start filling out my next couple weeks because then I can see my capacity. I also keep a record of everything that I've done before. So once I've completed a week, I just cut it and then I paste it down below everything. So when in the future I'm doing a search and I type in a keyword, it will still find it in my schedule. And I can either remember when I worked on something or I can remember what it was. Um, but it, this helps me keep a record of everything that I have done. All right, so out of the three components, you have your personal, your team, and your company. So within your team, there's two really important principles that I find wildly accessible, especially when we're remote working. Um, so the first one is you have agendas for everything, and then the second one is you have communication-specific meetings. So what I don't want to do on this first one is go in too deep because I could talk forever about how we set up our meetings. Um, but we have a couple different meetings. We have our weekly meetings, we have innovation meetings, and then we have same page meetings. Our weekly meetings and our same page meetings, we have taken the agendas from the book Traction. Um, it's the EOS system, so the Entrepreneur Operating System. And what this is, is every week, with those two meetings, people have a dedicated time and day that they meet. So every department knows that they meet on a specific day and time. And for your same page, which is a team member and their supervisor, is they meet at the same time every week or every other week. What this does is people understand the agenda because it's the same week to week, like nothing changes, but people come prepared. So with our team meetings, uh, the, the bulk of the meeting is called our IDS session. So our IDS session is when we go over all of the issues. We identify, we discuss, and we solve. 
And what this is, is throughout the week, people start preparing what the issues are that are going on and they start entering it in into our meeting agenda because things will come up throughout the week. But when you go to meet, you often forget what happened or what projects you were dealing with. And so people will start to populate it for several days in advance. And then when we get to the meeting time, when it comes to that portion, is then we dive in and we say, okay, these are the top three most important things that we deal with first. So we don't make a list of a hundred things that we're gonna go over, we pick three. And if we're able to accomplish those three, then we have the next three on the docket. Very rarely do we get past six things because if we're really solving it, we're getting down to the root of that issue. So what this does with time management is this helps that everyone's prepared beforehand. We maximize the time that we're meeting as a team. And then at the very end is when everyone gets assigned their to-dos. So say we had an issue um, with one of our installs. Um, something went wrong. Well, our install director, he would take a portion. Maybe there was a sales part that went wrong, so our sales director would take a portion. And maybe something went wrong in manufacturing, so they would take a portion to where they're all coming up or they're bringing together the solutions that they were assigned. And so this makes it to where not everything has to be done in the meeting, but you've solved it in the meeting. Now everyone has the to-dos that they need to do. And then the next week within the schedule is you recap, okay, did you get your to-do done? Did you follow through on that commitment that you made? And so instead of the director or the leaders having to follow through all throughout the week, is this just scheduled in the meeting? This really helps with time management because it groups things together. People know what to come prepared for, they know what they're reporting, and they really know how to center their information. With the same page meetings, it's the same thing. You know that you're meeting at a, um, a certain time on a certain day. And so if you have personal things that you need to talk with your supervisor about, you do it here. If you have issues, with something, a system, a person, a customer, whatever, you bring it to this meeting where you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation because you do the same thing. You identify, discuss, and you solve it. So instead of the leader having to solve a whole variety of things throughout the day, is they wait um, until they have the same page, if it can wait, they wait and then they try to combine it all at once. And this gives both of the team members ample time to think it through and then come together for a solution. So the third meeting that we have are innovation meetings and these ones are my favorite. Okay, these ones we use a lot of post-it notes. Um, and I won't go into this whole structure because again, this could be a whole meeting in itself, um, but we have gotten some of our ideas for this meeting from the book Sprint. And it's written by a couple of gentlemen who worked at Google Ventures. So it's, it's very interactive. But what we do at this meeting is we say, okay, if we're successful with this project, where is, what does that look like in six months? Or what does that look like in two years? And we start writing down everything on post-it notes. Generally in meetings, you spend a lot of time spinning or the loudest person consumes the meeting because they have the most to say and they feel very comfortable vocalizing their ideas. So we try to get as much out on post-it notes before people start talking across the room. One of the most helpful things um, with this meeting is we do what we call how might we. So when we're coming up with a solution, everyone is writing all of the solutions they have down on post-it notes. So one person could have 15 solutions, another person could have two solutions. And then we heat map it. So if you're doing it online, there's online programs for it, or if you're doing it in person, then you use stickers. Um, so if you're doing an online um, version is you can use Excel sheets, you can use um, a form of Google Docs or Google Forms because you're voting, is that everyone goes through and picks the two or three ideas that they like most. So instead of one person talking about one idea for 30 minutes and absorbing a lot of time, is now you have a variety of ideas. You could have 50 ideas up there and you sort through them very quickly because the top contestants all rise to the top. 
And this is extremely helpful when you're trying to manage time because you have now taken an eight hour meeting and you have put it into two hours or one hour, depending on how efficient your team is or how much you're innovating. Um, and so there's little things like that, that when you're holding meetings with your team is that they know what to expect and you're getting all of the ideas out there and then having a very efficient voting system to then move it through so that you just don't go into the spin cycle that you can find yourself into in meetings. Okay, a meeting that we have is we call them lightning rounds. And what this is, is this is a communication meeting. Is every morning, all of the directors and the managers and our salespeople call into the same meeting. So we have some people that are still working at the office and we have some people that are remote. And they all get together in this meeting and there's a very specific agenda that they go around the room. Every director talks about the projects that are within their court that will be happening that day. And they have questions. So they'll ask the salespeople, hey, this job is supposed to be completed today or tomorrow. What information do you have? Or I'm supposed to be completing this job in three days, but I still don't have any information. So it won't be done. And what this is, is they now have a chance to talk about the highest level issues um, that could turn into huge problems later on. And everyone just dives into it in the morning. We try to keep these between 30 and 45 minutes. What that is, is it's long enough for people to get in and help solve some of the issues, but it's not too long that it takes a majority of the morning. These have proven to really help us move the projects through and close up some of the communication gaps that you can have when you're a custom design shop like us. The other thing are those that are working remote is they check in with their leaders every morning. They look over what their to-do list is and they have um, times, estimating times that will take them to do certain projects. And then at the end of the day, the leader calls in and they said, okay, where are you with these items that you were going to get done and how long did it actually take you? So you don't call a couple days later and be surprised at what they have done as you're checking every day because it really enhances the accountability because the team member that's reporting understands someone's going to be checking in on this work that I need to be doing. And it helps them manage their time better so that they don't get sucked into other things that they could be doing remotely. And as the team member, if you're working remotely, it helps you prioritize and say, I've got to really um, have a non-disturbed time in this morning because I have these things that are going to take my full brain power. So I've got to make sure I clear out my distractions. So again, with the team member is you have agenda, with the teams, you have agendas and you have communication meetings. Within the three components, the third component is the company. And I have two principles for this one. The first principle is you assign a champion. The second principle is you have accountability with that champion. So assigning a champion is very important in that you understand what everyone's bandwidth is, you understand that the strengths that they have. Um, so that when you say, hey, I need you to take this project, they have the capacity to do so. So an analogy that works well with this is, you've heard it, if someone is in a restaurant and someone is needing an ambulance, instead of just calling out and saying, I need an ambulance, someone help me, you point to a person and you say, you call the ambulance. The response rate that that one person is going to have is dramatically higher than just waiting for someone in the crowd. So with your company, if you just have projects going on and you're just calling out and saying, we've got to work on this project, the likelihood of it happening is much slimmer than if you were to say, okay, you, you champion this project here, except you'd say that way nicer. Um, but what it does is it gives the person the ownership to do something, to own it, and to really think it through. They'll start managing the time on that project way better than what you can manage their time. So to help us with this is we use a system called Smartsheet. And this is a paid one, but Smartsheet is great in that you can, you can keep all of your things organized. So we have several different smart sheets. We have smart sheets for jobs. We have smart sheets for initiatives. We have smart sheets for internal marketing pro projects, but all of the information is the same. Within one area, we have 
okay, what's the status? We have what the project is that you're working on. We have the task name. And most importantly, we have who it's assigned to and what the due date is. Within here, this helps that person who's over the project know I am owning this project or I'm owning this component. My name is assigned here and everybody knows that this is mine that I'm really going to try to figure out. How this helps with time management is as a leader, if you're telling a person what they need to do every single step and you're micromanaging it because they're not the full owner of it or they're not understanding that they're championing it, you're going to spend a lot of extra time in the work. You're gonna spend a lot of time just helping move the project forward and you won't be able to do any of the other things that are on your plate very well. And so when you are managing your time well and you're helping assign as a champion to the project, the whole company all of a sudden starts moving a little bit smoother because people are taking the initiative to then figure out and solve. And if they're managing their time well, then it just compounds on each other. A big component of when you have a champion is that you hold them accountable. You say, here's your priorities that you need to do. Here's how it relates to all of the other work you have on your plate, and here's the goal. And you check in with them at a scheduled time so they know if you're checking in on every same page, if you're sending a separate email that you need a status update, but it's regular. So it's not like, okay, you're not checking in with me. You know, I'm off the hook. No, you're not off the hook. Your name is on this project and this is the due date. And as a leader, you really follow through. So smart sheet for us is where we can keep a ton of information so that the leader doesn't have to remember all of the specifics of the project that they're then giving to someone. So we've talked about three areas. We've talked about your personal area and within your personal area, you keep a note for everything and you're very intentional on your schedule. We've talked about your team component and you have an agenda for everything and you have communication meetings. And for your company, the third component is that you have assigned champions and you hold them accountable. Now, this isn't the full picture, but when you're working remote, things can be going so fast and you can have so many distractions that if you really boil it down to those six elements, managing your time becomes so much easier and so much more attainable. So there's many, there's many things in here that you can, you can read and I will put the resources here on books that we've read and that we have found helpful either personal team or company wise. So ask as many questions as you can and I will answer them. Okay, thank you. All right. That was fanta a fantastic presentation. Um, I did want to make just a quick announcement. So apparently there was a link sent out in a reminder email today to join this meeting. And that's why several people were late coming in. If that happened to you, if you could please email Madeline, she will send you a recording of this if you're wanting to know kind of what pieces you missed. Um, so Madeline, if you could type your email in the chat so everyone has it, that would be awesome. And other than that, I'm just gonna open this up for questions. Uh, I didn't see I didn't see any in the chat as during the presentation, but definitely if you have questions or if Tania, if you have anything else to add to that, um, while I'm waiting for questions to come in, uh, I actually had a question. So when it, for, at least for me, something that I find is in my role, um, because there's kind of two different types of roles, right? You have people who manage people and that's kind of their primary role. I mean, their job is ma the management of the people. And then you have others who will manage some people, but then also have a, a kind of their own responsibilities and their own tasks and things other than just managing, sort of a mix, a hybrid. Uh, my role is kind of a hybrid thing where I, I, it's a little bit of both. And it's really, really difficult uh, you talked about, you know, assigning a champion and doing that. And I've, I've been starting a little bit of that. I'm just curious to me how you, 
how much time you spend on the management side of, of assigning people and figuring out who's going to do what versus just jumping in and doing it yourself. Like what's kind of the, the balance there that you find? <laughs> okay. This is an awesome question. So our team here, most of our leaders have the hybrid role. Um, I think there's only a few people who are focused on just working on the business. Almost everybody else works in the business and on the business. Um, so what I find is when I'm doing my schedule is I try to group things. So if I'm doing managing, I try to put together all of those managing things on one day. Generally, I leave my Tuesdays and my Thursdays free of meetings or any type of management responsibility so that I can do the things, if that makes sense. Also, I'll group it to where if I need to really get something done is I'll block out a thing in the morning or I'll shift my schedule slightly to where I'll work when people aren't at the office. Um, so I'll dig in and I'll be here or I'll be at my house and I'll work until 10 at night to really compact that time that I'm not getting disrupted because I do have direct reports. And that is the same thing that our leaders do as well is they have to figure out, okay, when can I seclude myself so that I'm really just focused doing the work versus trying to get other people to take it over? Does, does that answer your question, Scott? Yes, that's perfect. So we have another question uh, from Haven. How do you personally separate work from home during these stay at home times? And do you have suggestions for those who are struggling? So a big part in this is I have dedicated time. Um, when I first had um, my oldest daughter is I would work in the morning um, to where I'd get up at six in the morning. Well, sometimes it'd be five in the morning and I would say, okay, I'm really separating here to where um, I am going to work for a solid six hours. And then my husband would need to take the baby and they would need, and he would do all of the responsibilities there in the morning. Um, now when I've gone and I've worked remote some and I, I am, am at home is I try to make a clear distinction and saying, okay, what is everything that I can do at home that I won't be able to do otherwise? What is everything that I need to really group together? Um, and then tell people, okay, you got to give me time. If it's from one to five, you know, I need some undisturbed time here. And then I will get back with you on these other things at five or whatever it is. Um, so it's all about boundaries and making sure that people understand the plan that you have so that they know when they can then approach you and they can ask you. That's home, like that's people at home and that's people at work. Does that answer your question, Haven? That does, thank you, that's great advice. So while we're waiting for more questions, I know I'm not the only one with questions. So if you guys have questions, type them in. <laughs> one other question I had was the advice you gave is great, right? Like you're talking about the personal, the team, the company. And with even within that, even though it's just a few pointers, sometimes making drastic changes or changing a lot all at once is really hard. If you were to pick one thing for the people here to change, it's going to make the biggest impact in, in their daily work lives or personal lives let's say personal or any of it, what do you think it would be the one change that you think has the biggest impact from the, from the items that you discussed and laid out? It's figuring out your schedule at the beginning of the week. So you saw how I have a note. That is how I mentally prepare what's coming up each day. And that's how I know how much capacity that I actually have. Um, and it helps me, it helps me really think through the projects beforehand, which then ultimately helps me save time. So if you, if, yeah, out of everything there, if it's just that you, you plan your schedule before you jump in and then you're very intentional in how you group it, that will make your biggest difference. Awesome. Great advice. So we do have several questions coming in. Um, the first one's from Kirby McDonald. He says, you talked about different types of meetings. How do you encourage more interaction in the meetings? Yep. 
<laughs> okay, so I could do a whole, I mean, I could probably talk like four or five hours just on meetings because it, there is such an art to it. But what we do to encourage more interaction is we will go around the table. So everyone will write their things on sticky notes so that they can have time to process because sometimes people need more time to process than others. So you say, okay, take the next five minutes and think through this question I just asked. And then as they write it down, you can see who's starting to pile things up. And then you say, okay, in one minute, I'm gonna start going around the table. And that's when they have an opportunity and not an opportunity. That's when it is requested that they interact. Um, so unless they really don't have anything to say, which is kind of rare if you have a specific meeting and they know the agenda, um, you'll get much more interaction. What I found is if you don't go around the table, the loudest voices will dominate and those that might not feel comfortable to talk up, talk or might not have been able to gather their thoughts, they'll just sit back in their seats. So going around the table is very important. So I've had the opportunity to be in a few different meetings or several meetings with Tania and this absolutely works. <laughs> so, so that's good advice. So Spencer Douglas says, do you ever find yourself ready and waiting for a meeting to begin and everyone at work ignored you or forgot to bring you into the remote meeting? I don't know. See, I'm one of those dominant people to where it's like if someone's ignoring me, I'm making sure they don't ignore me. Um, I'm trying to think of what would be a good solution for this. This is where something that we've learned is that you have people that tend to be a little bit softer and people that tend to be a little bit more dominant. If you tend to be a little bit softer, meaning you don't feel as comfortable raising a flag and saying, hey, you forgot me, or you don't feel as comfortable calling someone up and saying, why didn't you add me to this meeting? Um, this is where going beforehand and at the beginning of the week, clarifying with everyone and saying, okay, these are the meetings that I have on my schedule. Is this what's matching up with everybody? Is this where I need to be included? Because then you're not having to do the confrontation right then, which could give you a lot of anxiety, is you do it beforehand and you start clearing the way that way. Does that, does that make sense, Spencer? I'm not hearing a response from Spencer, but I'm assuming it does. So I had a, another question from Buck Still. It seems like I always have 10 fires to put out and I'm always behind. What do I do when I'm late on several key tasks? Oh. Yes, I understand this. <laughs> um, this is where I have my cue. So if I have my cue, this is everything that everybody is asking me for. Um, I put the most important things in my schedule. And if I start going through the day and it's like, man, I was supposed to get to these four things and I've only gotten to two, then I start talking to people and saying, okay, I can't get that to today. If I get it to you tomorrow by nine, if I work later here, does that work? Um, and also if I choose that highlight item, if there's an item in there that makes a difference for all of the other things that you're doing. So say um, you're dealing with a fire with a customer and before that there was a problem with the system and there was a problem with a fellow team member. Really identifying and say, okay, if you work with this fellow team member, can they help you with the system and help you with the customer? or by identifying the system, will it help you within the team member and the customer? Does that make sense? And sometimes they're unrelated, but really making sure that the items that you're doing first are those highlight items that you give it the most time. And if you can't get to things, you move it to the next day and you're communicating with everyone that you need to and saying, I missed this, but this is when I'll get it done by. Does that make sense? So the, another question that, that Ruben has is actually in my mind similar, it's related, because I think a lot of times the most important tasks require the most brain power. And so we tend to procrastinate and put them behind. And so Ruben's, Ruben Vasquez's question is, he, he likes your lists and checklists, but what motivates you to get the list done or to make sure you accomplish what you need to that day? Do you reward yourself somehow? Interesting. I guess I've never really thought what motivates me to get it done. It's more of, 
I want to accomplish a lot and I have a, I have really big visions and really big dreams. Um, and so for me to do that, I have a lot of little checklists that I need to get done in between. Um, and so if I'm wanting to hit certain goals or if I'm wanting to grow personally in certain areas, then I just know if I don't get my checklist done, then I'm just farther behind on that. Ah, I'm trying to think of, okay, well, actually I do do this. So, okay, outside of the quarantine time right now, <laughs> which is kind of an anomaly, is I always have something that I'm working towards. So even if I have a trip planned in several months or I'm going to Salt Lake or whatever it is, is I'm looking forward to something. So it's like I'm on a marathon checking off all my to-dos and I know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And it just kind of helps give you that motivation or if it's like I'm working late every night and I feel pretty guilty, uh, not being home and not spending time with my family. I have something at the end of that saying, okay, we're going here, we're going to the park or we're gonna have a great moment or event, you know, in a week. And then it really helps you push through some of those times that's really difficult to click things off because you're spending so much time within work. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's really, really great advice. I can think back to, you know, I think we've all done this. Like you mentioned, if you have a vacation coming up, you cram and you push and you do all this stuff. I think for that intrinsic motivation and that reward of, okay, I can go to vacation and there's nothing on my plate right now where I've cleaned a lot of that off. So kind of having that, mm -hmm. those goals in mind and having that, I, I really like that. Um, we're almost, it's almost time to wrap up. We probably have time for one more question. If someone has a question, type in or ask. Uh, I'll give you just a second here if you have anything. If not, um, oh, so Buck still asks you to please summarize your tools again. My, okay, so like the, the six individual tools within the company? Is that I what you think so? Yeah. Okay, so within personal, what you have, let's see, I'm making sure I, I quote this right. So within uh, personal. Sorry, sorry oh. Tania, he clarified the question. It's uh, your software, your tools. Oh, your tools. okay, software. So I, I have a Mac computer, so that's where I keep my notes, which is like the notebook um, that I've shown you my schedule in. I, we use um, Microsoft Teams for our communication meetings. Um, those are the ones I talked with you about, like when our directors meet together. And Smartsheet is where we keep track of all of our tasks. Um, we also use a variety of other software um, that I can tell you, some are paid, some are not. Um, we use um, Function Fox for our creative department, which helps all of the all of our designers track how much time they're spending on each thing and gives their director their capacity for the week. And it also keeps track of all of their um, projects that they have going on. Um, we have the Microsoft Suite, which is funny because we all have Mac computers. We have the Microsoft Suite that we use Planner in. We have a couple team members who are really uh, experimenting with that. We also um, do the Calendly. So if we're needing to schedule specific meetings, people can go in and then just select a time that works for them. And then to help with the communication gaps, this is another paid one, but it's called Trainual. This is where we put all of our trainings. And this is something that we've started a couple months ago, but it really helps time management because you're not repeating the same thing to every team member that you record your video and then they can go in and watch it anytime that there's a question. Okay, so that was like a lot of like different things. And if there's, I can send out a list um, and, you know, give it to these guys to distribute if you want that. Awesome. One more quick question that was asked. How has working remotely changed how you approach meetings and time management? Interesting. So working remotely first started for me about five and a half years ago when I did it the most. Um, it's easier to do it when you're not leading a lot of people. Um, but it made it to where I had to be very intentional because there's so many demands when you're working remotely. Your kids are asking you questions and you start to feel that guilt on why I'm just sitting here working and there's all of these other things going on. Um, and so that's when it really got into say, okay, if I'm going to work, 
I'm going to do it well and I'm going to use my time the most effective I can so that when I actually switch to being home, I'm home. When I'm at work, I'm, I'm really um, being intentional on what I'm doing. So it helps you cut it. Well, what I learned is it helped me cut out a lot of the miscellaneous things that can just be time drains or time sucks. Like being on social media all the time will take hours. It's like, I have more important things. I have my career and I have my family that are more important than some of these other things that I'm doing. So remote working helped me compact my time. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tania, for your presentation, for answering all these questions. Um, if we were live, I'm sure we'd clap or something. <laughs> here, I think on here you can do a big thumbs up on the reactions. There's some claps. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Like innovation. So I just wanted to remind everyone to make sure and join us again next Tuesday uh, for session five. It's project management. And so Tania touched a little bit on some project management stuff. So it's kind of a great segue into this next training. It's uh, project management, keeping your teams and projects moving with remote teams. And that will be David Lisenby from Nice Inc. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you on Tuesday.